My name is Linda Timichin. I'm an engineer here at NASA Ames Research Center and I work for the University of California at Santa Cruz. My role has been instrument development and uh, instrument development for a variety of payloads or a variety of different experiment types that go up on small satellites or up to the space station. I work with all of the payload teams that are sending their experiments up into space to help gather as many extra tissues or as much extra data as we can. So when you're designing an instrument, there's a lot of steps that uh, you go through in the process. And the very first thing you need to do is become intimately familiar with the science experiment that is going to take place up in microgravity. So I work really closely with biologists and other life science researchers. I learn everything I need to know about their specific experiment and what they are trying to achieve so that I can then go back and think of other ways that we can measure the same thing they would like to measure up in space. A lot of researchers might use a plate reader to look at, um, look at 96 well plates, so 96 copies of the same uh, experiment. We can't send um, a uh, plate reader up into space on a satellite because it would just be way too huge, it wouldn't work properly. So what we have to do is basically find a way to get that same kind of data with a novel small instrument. There are a number of model organisms that we use here at NASA Ames to study space biology, and that includes mice, a worm or a nematode called C. elegans, fruit flies, and different kinds of bacteria and yeast, and one primary plant we use is called Arabidopsis. And the optical instruments that I have worked on are primarily for cells or C. elegans. So all of these instruments and experiments are part of a larger space biology program at NASA. And that covers everything that we're trying to do to understand better, as its name implies, how biology is affected by gravity. And we can try to um, mimic the environment in space, but really the only way to really do it and um, have you know, a full lengthy exposure in microgravity is to send life up into space. We study life science in space for several reasons. I think the most common belief is that we do it so that we understand what happens to astronauts up in microgravity. But it turns out that a lot of the difficulties that astronauts experience up in space are very similar to degenerative diseases that we experience here on Earth. So many of the experiments that are sent up are studying some of those mechanisms and pathways that trigger certain kinds of early aging in astronauts so that we can also help individuals here on Earth.